There are certain things that my dad really drilled into me growing up. There are certain biblical doctrines that he would just hammer again and again, certain themes that he would come back to again and again and again. And if I've heard my dad quote these verses that I'm about to show you, if I've heard him once, I've literally probably heard him quote these verses 50 times. I mean, he had these verses down. I mean, he was just constantly bringing this up. I just wanna quickly defend why I believe that my friend, Pastor Dane Johansson is saved, even though he and I disagree on many things doctrinally. Let me just read for you what he himself posted to Facebook just a day or two ago. So I'm not pulling out something from a year and a half ago, two years ago or whatever. This is just from day before yesterday, he said, I was saved by grace alone, through faith alone, in Jesus Christ alone. My sins have been washed by his blood forever since the very moment I believed upon him unto salvation. My salvation is sure and steadfast in his hands, and no sin of mine, past, present, or future, can ever separate me from him. No repentance, good works, no Bible reading or church attending can save me, only belief upon the one who lived and died for me, my savior, Jesus Christ. I trust not the sweetest frame, but wholly lean on Jesus name. So this is something that was deeply ingrained in me. And in fact, it's been a theme of my preaching. It's something I have hammered and preached for years. Ever since I've been pastoring, it's something I've believed strongly since I was a little kid, because from a child, I knew the Holy Scriptures and specifically these verses that my dad just hammered into me. And I thank God for that, because it's great doctrine. There's a common misconception of an antinomian flavor that's prominent in American Christianity, which assumes that the only thing that's required to be truly Christian is to believe, to believe Jesus. I know lots of people who believe Jesus are going to hell, and so do you. Sound familiar, Dad? He that is of God heareth God's words. Ye therefore hear them not because you're not of God. This was hammered into me. I have spent hours and hours and hours and hours talking to him about salvation. I've spent hours and hours and hours out soul winning with him in Cyprus. We spent a week and a half together over there doing soul winning. We've done our Greek meetup here more times than I can count, okay? I believe that he is saved. Or they think that all it's required is to believe, to pray some prayer, prayer, pray sinner's prayer, then assert oneself as being born again, and then wait till either the Lord Jesus returns or death takes them home to him. Go to John chapter 10. John chapter 10, verse four. And when he putteth forth his sheep, he goeth before them, and the sheep follow him, for they know his voice, and a stranger will they not follow, but will flee from him, for they know not the voice of strangers. Remember talking about that, Dad? A few times? Yeah. You know, you can sit there and pull out these clips and, and try to just find something to use against him, but if you actually would contact him and speak to him, you would actually find out that although we disagree on predestination, he does believe the gospel. I was part of a ministry that actually used to go around after the gospel was the preached and uh, all the people raised their hands and every eye was closed, I assure you of that, except for the people who were looking to count how many hands were up. And when the hands went up, they counted them and then afterwards went around and handed out cards to all the people who raised their hand and prayed the prayer and those cards told them the date that they were saved. And they said, don't lose that because every time you doubt, Look at that little card that we're giving you from this harvest thing. I forget the name of the, the festival that we would always go to. I think it was Harvest Festival. But our ministry would do it with the Harvest Festival. And here's this card. Hold on to it. Don't lose it. I guess you'd lose your salvation if you lost the, the card. But I digress. That's all they think that salvation is. It's giving intellectual assent. It's believing. John chapter 7. Then said Jesus unto them, again, Verily, verily, I say unto you, I'm the door of the sheep. All that ever came before me are thieves and robbers. And I love this part, but the sheep did not hear them. And look, I'm not gonna defend his Calvinist beliefs because I don't share his Calvinist beliefs. And I think it's cognitive dissonance to believe in both free will and, you know, that God predestined everything. But you know what? 
Just because he's wrong on that doesn't make him unsaved, and I'm going to stand by that. My sheep hear my voice, and I know them, and they follow me, and I give unto them eternal life, and they shall never perish, neither shall any man pluck them out of my hand. My Father which gave them me is greater than all, and no man is able to pluck them out of my Father's hand. Now, if you would turn to 1 John chapter 2. 1 John chapter number 2. 1 John chapter number 2. Those scriptures that I just showed you from John chapter 8 and from John chapter 10 are something that my dad ingrained into me. And you know what my dad was teaching me and what I've constantly preached is this. If somebody leaves our church and goes and becomes a Mormon, if somebody who claims to be saved goes and joins the Roman Catholic Church and says, nope, I, I'm a former Baptist, now I'm Roman Catholic. If somebody who claims to be a Christian or goes to our church, goes out and joins the Russian Orthodox Church, the Jehovah's False Witnesses, or if they become an atheist, what would we say about that person? We would say that person was never saved in the first place. And I'm not saying I don't think they were never saved. I am saying they for sure were not saved. Oh, maybe Jesus didn't die for everybody. Man, shut that Calvinism up. Amen. Died for everybody.